from Milpitas, California, at the edge of Silicon Valley, it's The Cube, covering autonomous vehicles. Brought to you by Western Digital. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in Milpitas, California at the Western Digital Event. It's the Autotech Council Autonomous Vehicle Event. About 300 people talking about all these really complicated issues around autonomous vehicle, a wide variety of startups and enterprises, and it's a really interesting space because there's, as somebody said in the keynote, there's literally thousands of problems to solve. But one of the angles is really on the public, the public transportation side. Really excited to have a, a really innovative startup and welcome Emmanuel Spera. He is the CEO of Next Future Transportation. Emmanuel, welcome. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for inviting me, guys. Absolutely. Yeah. So for the folks that aren't familiar, you can go to the website. There's a great demo video that you guys have of the solution. What are you guys building? So we're building something very particular because so far you see all those company presenting uh, what is well known as an autonomous car. So let's build something that can uh, let us read our newspaper while we are commuting. And um, very nice, a lot of money that's been invested in that. But the reality is that how we are, we, are we taking care of the gridlocks that are affecting our city? Are we moving around enough people? Are we solving the problem of, of congestion? I'll say no. Because it doesn't matter if we have an EV, an autonomous uh, driving vehicle, or an SUV or a car, you still have congestion. You still need to have a large number of cars to move around people. Right, right. So the only viable solution is to use buses. Buses have been there in the last 100 years, and uh, they are very expensive. Actually, the most expensive uh, asset that's... Uh, uh, cities and uh, municipalities are using, so they're using taxpayer money to pay those assets, and they are under underutilized, because you have a high demand in uh, peak time, so people use buses, right. but on the rest of the day, there when there are no peak time, there, there is very low usage rate, I would say around 20, 25%. So take a look at those, at those buses, they are empty all the time. So our solution is about modularizing this tr kind of transportation. So uh, literally, we took a bus and we divided the bus in section. So you have uh, six modules that, that are coupled together, are the same length and capacity of a standard bus, city bus. But with the modularization, we can uh, create a system which literally breathe because we have longer vehicle in peak time when there is high demand and shorter vehicle when there is very low demand, when you have just few passengers. And the magic is that when those pods are connected one to another, they share the internal space. And by the way, all of that can be done autonomously. Right. The coupling is always autonomously, done autonomously. And uh, we can start from tomorrow because we can have a driver when we begin using the system. And when the technology allows us to be um, autonomous, we're going to run the autonomous operating system on that. Right. Uh, this can be done autonomously now in closed environment where you don't have a mixed uh, traffic environment. But we demonstrated that this could be done. It's funny that you, you came at the problem from a bus and breaking the bus into modular pieces. When I was prepping for our interview and, and doing some research, I looked at it more as, as kind of a combination of a bunch of individual passenger vehicles that then create almost more like a train. But it's the same concept, and it made me think of really kind of IP networks where when you can bring them all together into an autonomous unit and they operate as one, much more efficient, exactly. they don't need space in between. Exactly. And then really an interesting concept where that packet <laughs> can can kind of a jump onto another another network if it needs to go down another route. So the fact that these things can couple and uncouple, the fact that the people can change units within within the structure, you're really adding kind of a smart transportation that then can come together and really act like a city bus. Really fascinating way Absolutely. to look at that problem. Absolutely, it's it's, it's simple. So the technology. Uh, to create that, if you look at those pods, seem like very far away, but we were able to create this now using off-the-shelf components. Right. And uh, literally, when you when you give uh, people passenger an option, this kind of option, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna love it. Right. Now think about now when you need to go from point A to point B, you need to take a taxi, um, 
ride a bicycle, take an Uber, so change um, and have an intermodal transportation to reach your destination, and it's gonna take a while to reach your destination. With this system, you, jo you just jump on another pod and you change your destination within the same system. Right. So it uh, can all be controlled by an app that you carry or by screen that are um, on the pods that tell you you need to go northbound, go on pod number one. You need to go eastbound, go on pod number two. Right. So the system is able to reorganize itself based on the user's needs. Literally. So we're here, we're sponsored by Western Digital as part of their whole Data Makes Possible program. From a data perspective and an AI perspective, how did you have to approach that problem a little bit differently? And what were some of the challenges that, that enabled you to overcome to create this unique solution? So before you were saying that we are all here uh, at this conference and we need to solve like thousands of problems. We actually have to solve like millions of problems. <laughs> billions of problems. I mean, we are, and AI is the only way we can uh, overcome so, uh, such problem right. in some area. Uh, obviously, we need to take control of the basics of the beginning of this, of this journey. And uh, clearly, the AI will be amazing when the system uh, is fully working and you can predict information, you can uh, uh, connect with the passenger, with the user of the system directly, and uh, predict behavior, predict needs, and uh, on the passenger side. And then also, you're gonna use the AI to predict how the system is, um, is flowing, meaning how the vehicle are uh, using the lane, um, if there are um, gridlock somewhere, so how you can, uh, uh, on the fly, reorganize uh, the way those vehicles, those pods were gonna move around the city uh, to go over obstacle and uh, um, reach a destination faster and ultimately, in our case, where is the best place to couple with another vehicle based on passenger destination right. and length of the journey. Right, so Emmanuel, and this isn't just a concept, you guys actually have Working prototypes exactly. out in the field. So, where you know, how many do you have deployed? Kind of, what's your what's your roadmap and hope for kind of a rollout? Or do you have is a partner strategy? What's a, what's kind of your your plan to scale? So, um, we had this concept. The company was made in 2015. We're already showing this concept in 2016, beginning of 2017. Okay. In one year, we were able to deliver to our first customer, which is the Dubai government. So. Last uh, February, during the World Government Summit in Dubai, we showcased uh, two full-spec vehicles that were able to uh, couple uh, and decouple autonomously and move around the venue. And we have been testing them since January in Dubai um, in a closed area or in, the, in a particular events where we could showcase and have passengers on board right. and uh, drive them for a, a, small, a small route. And clearly, our solution is, is, is not for um, OEM car maker, it's for uh, municipalities that really need to solve a problem. And they've been uh, stuck, literally, with the bus in the last 100 years. There have been no major innovation in the bus industry. Uh, the only innovation I see now, they are, they are, they are electrifying buses. Right, right. So now you have a way more expensive assets, which is still <laughs> underutilized. Right. So I spend more, and it's still no one, no one, no one use it. So what we are doing, we are we are going to provide uh, fleets to municipalities, and uh, uh, Dubai will be the first, especially um, since they're having their Dubai 2020 uh, exhibition. Um, we hope we, we can provide them with a, a fleet by that time. Think about that: uh, 100 vet, 120 pods are the same. Um, as 20 buses. Right, right. And that'll, that's your that's your targeted first deploy, something like that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the cost is even lower than a bus. All right. Well, Emmanuel, it's really cool technology. It's, I you, just Jeff. love the innovation in terms of, you know, kind of slicing the problem in a slightly different way, being really innovative and partnering. As you said, you know, you have not raised a hundred million dollars in all this all this craziness and Very actually lean. deploying. So really exciting story. Thanks for sharing with it. And we excited, uh, excited to watch it unfold over the next couple of years. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Thank He's Emmanuel. You. I'm Jeff. We're the Auto Tech Council, part of Western Digital's data makes possible. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.